public input. Approval of the minutes for November 6th school board meeting. Second. Any further discussion, corrections, or omissions? I didn't see anything in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Motion to approve the November 9th budget proposal meeting. And there's Mr. L. <laughs> <laughs> budget meeting minutes. Yep. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any errors or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Motion to accept the November 16th budget meeting. So moved. Do I hear a second? second? Any errors or omissions? Yes. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Manifest are uh, going around. I think they're up by Greg. Yes. Um, no unfinished business. No new business. Um, special ed report there, Kelly. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we were told that we weren't. Yeah, I was told. I was told they wouldn't be more presentation. So, okay. I mean, oh, okay. 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 I saw your report. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any questions for Kelly? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions of Kelly's two line report? <laughs> okay. Um, any questions for Jennifer on her report? I did add some numbers that I've forgotten, but we can share those real time. Number of student council members, we've got 18 middle schoolers oh, and 18 high yeah. schoolers. I left that blank. Okay. And for National Honor Society, um, there are 14 juniors and 9 seniors. So that was not in there, I noticed when I got awesome. sent to you. Okay. Um, <coughs> Oh. Well, I just want to mention the report was fairly brief. That I just want to mention we had two, uh, I thought, positive uh, visits to uh, community colleges, one, one to the Lake Region. Um, we had a nice tour, um, especially the uh, auto um, courses they offer, programs they offer there. Uh, brand new building, very impressive. And of course, uh, this last Friday we did take a tour of their open annual open house of White Mountain Community College okay. in, up in the Berlin. Nice. <clears throat> well, if you're highlighting that, <laughs> we have, Jen's got more. Oh, now we're going. We <laughs> fabulous Veterans Day celebration, and the yes. play was oh, yes. Yes. fabulous. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, and uh, our Socktober sock drive. Um, resulted in over like 780 pairs of socks and we delivered those to the different homeless shelters that came and received them but we were able to go to Lancaster um, and get a tour of the facility so we took the kids on a field trip it was, it was good and PR. Lori Wood did a great job with that inquiry class project. Good article in Korea too. Yeah, yeah. it was a really good Nice to see those things. Mr. Pryor. Do you have any questions? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Eye, you you eye saw eye. the updated pictures for the Washington Street, the, yeah. you know, that yeah. came out really nice. Yeah. And Those are they hammered after. down too. Yeah. Okay, it. good. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully, hopefully they were labeled the right <laughs> way. <laughs> oh yeah, they're before I did it. Because I'm thinking, okay, it was one on the left side and the right side. <laughs> Chat you mentioned that Hammer Down did some extra work there uh, at no charge, so let's thank them for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you a question about um, um, train yeah. Yeah. <coughs> with software. So w we were given the proposal last year from them to purchase a piece of hardware which would allow them to remote into our system. Mm -hmm. I believe the quote we got last year was like 30, 
four hundred dollars roughly, mm -hmm. um, and that was presented as a group, and and um, we elected not to do that. However, when they came last week to um, handle an issue with a sensor and a uh, controller board, um, we found out that their their trips are not covered in our yearly service. So. Uh, $2,200 trip up and back, you know, they still would have had to come for one trip, but they would have been able to diagnose that remotely, so it would have been half the cost of that. So you figure if that happens three times a year, which it surpasses that, then we would get our money back in the long run. So just something that was presented last year and uh, it was declined. But I think we've haven't had trained for a while and then we got them back, is that right? To keep track of our Correct. stuff? Yeah. And to me it's worth the expense to have a contract and let them do the remote from wherever they live. Yeah, because it, it took that, that was the other thing, is like the, the music room at the high school didn't have heat for three days because it took them that long to be able to come up here. Um, so we had to, you know, finagle some things around, but we found out it was just a bad controller board. But still, they had to come up, diagnose it, then they um, still have to come back and replace it. But they, in the meantime, they've turned it on high heat, and that's the only, it's either high heat or no heat for that area. But they could, they probably could have diagnosed they, it from where? Correct, without having to come here. Without having to come they, up. And they could have done it the same said day. to you, we need this, right. and we'll order and come up. Correct. So, so. Three of those issues are paid for the for, pay for yeah. itself. Yeah. And that's a one-time fee to buy that piece of hardware. It's not like a yearly thing. It's just a piece of hardware that sits in the custodial office where the computer is that yeah. they're able to sign into. Mm -hmm. So it's a one-time cost. Do we have it in the budget for next year? It was not, but we can probably make arrangements, or we can make arrangements mm -hmm. out of you know, this year's or something. What was the figure deal? Was I think it's like $3,400 for, for the device. Well, sure. that sounds like a no-brainer to me. So. I can get back to you. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look at what we have in right now and then for next year as well and see what we can do. Okay. But it would be a long, I might, my guess would be a long-term cost savings. Yeah. That, Probably, probably short term actually. Mm -hmm. Probably get the money back before the end of the year. Yeah. At this rate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Crystal. Uh, do you have any questions for Crystal? <laughs> did we do her already? No, but she, they aren't prepared to do a report. Well, I know, but anybody got any questions for Crystal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only, there wasn't much on my report either. Um, just uh, I want to make a mention that Chris Kapler won the Who's in, Who Inspires Us Award. Um, I had nominated her and she won. So she and Deb and Nurse Penny went down there. And she didn't know why she was going, so it was a surprise. Oh. <laughs> but Deb Hansen was able to read her that. So I attached um, the photo and her my nomination for her. Um, but I just wanted to make that statement out loud that she did win that. She's very deserving of it. And then tomorrow if you're bored at 145 is the Lakeway fundraiser where I get color blasted. So one forty five out back. Mm -hmm. yeah, you'll be able to find me, so I'll be the one that looks like Rainbow Bright. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a camera down there. Yeah, we probably can make that happen. <laughs> It'll be all over Facebook before I get out of the chair. Pretty well covered. <laughs> but this year we're actually pulling two surprise teacher names from a hat. Right before, yeah, so they so think they're so funny laughing at me, but <laughs> <laughs> two of them will be joining me tomorrow. One on either side. That's right. <laughs> Crystal, I do have a question. It's yep. a question for you and, and Dale, possibly. A couple weeks ago, there was a leak in the main hallway from the office doing town to the main corridor. Mm -hmm. Did they did, did determine what that was from? Or um, Palmer Roofing did come in. I did not hear the end result of that, but okay. it is not leaking anymore, so I don't know if it was a, like a plumbing issue. I can check with Terry. I usually meet with him on Tuesday mornings, I no so I haven't, I haven't met with him since okay. they've been in. Just curious as we discuss the yeah. issues at Lakeway. That roofing is on Terry and my agenda every, every Tuesday morning that we meet. 
Um, just sort of keep an eye on that. And Dale and I have talked to about keeping an eye on the amount of snow that accumulates on the roof this year and trying to stay ahead of that piece as well. Thank Hopefully you. it's done and over with, but I'll let well, you know. Well, that wasn't an area that we weren't concerned with. <coughs> that was a new one. New area. That okay. was a new one. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, committee reports, personnel. We did have a quick meeting. Okay. <coughs> well, I mean, we didn't just talk about stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> budget, budget increases and things like that. Okay. Of uh, income. Okay. <coughs> All right. Anything from the facilities? Great. No, we haven't met since our last meeting. We reported the last time on that, so nothing other than my question about that recent leak in Lakeway. So. Okay, so where was that leak at Lakeland? It was in the main hallway from the, if you come into by the office and go down towards the main corridor that it's, then splits off into all the major yeah. um, teaching areas in the gym and the cafeteria. It was right in that main hallway. Oh. Okay. So there's actually another one then. So that was the first one, then okay. the one after that is right outside Peggy Bromley's. Oh, okay, so, so even, there's, even yeah. closer to So the there office. was one where you're referencing at the end of yeah. the T there, and then there was one farther back after yeah. the hallway. Mm -hmm. Well spent. <laughs> So they were in twice. Yeah. So. And then there was some, as you turn the corner and head towards the cafeteria, there was, I could see some staining in the ceiling tiles, but I, don't, I couldn't remember if those were older. That's been there. That's been there. I, yeah. couldn't, I was, didn't know if it was from the same leak that kind of yeah. wrapped around the corner or what. Don't look up. <laughs> <laughs> and those tiles are in a lot of places looking pretty dingy. Okay. All right. Policies. We have several policies. Oh, you got it there, too. Yeah, we have another meeting um, next. When did I put that? On? Tuesday. <coughs> Wednesday the 29th. Wednesday. I moved it to 9:30 because I'm supposed to have a meeting with the superintendent at 8:30. That's correct. Okay. So um, first policy is. is um, GBC <coughs> and slash ADB. Um, you'll notice in red the new updates from the New Hampshire School Boards Association um, on that one. And then number four, we had to add D, which was consuming, processing, or distributing alcohol or illegal drugs at official school functions, not on school property. And we had to add number eight, which says post at each school and in the district school bus drug-free school zone signs with a map of the drug-free zone around each school. And the signs will be provided by the Department of Education. So if they're not, I guess, Ms. Dr. and I also just going to check into that. So um, that is a revision of that policy. <coughs> entertain a motion um, for a first read and adoption because we've had it in effect for a while. Motion to adopt policy GBEC for first reading and adoption. Do you hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The other thing is this these two policies reverse. One is in section A, A, D, B. It's the same name. The other one is in section G, and it goes G, B, E, C, then slash A, D, B. So, you're looking for it. Um, so, with that being said, I would entertain a motion to accept it as an A, D, B policy as well. I'd like to make a motion to also accept the uh, drug free workplace. Drug Free Schools Policy ADD for first reading and adoption. Do we hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. The next one we have is um, Policy DCD or DGD? DGD. DGD. Okay. This is a new policy for the district. Um, it's a uh, school district credit cards. We kind of went over this with a fine tooth comb. Um, 
And the statement of purpose is that the superintendent or de designee is authorized to procure a credit card or cards in the school district's name. And it will under, be under the sole supervision of the superintendent or the business administrator. And the policy says that the dis, uh, district credit card um, shall be used only for the purchase of school district pre-approved official district expenses. Um, what we have is uh, people that go down, sometimes we need uh, something at Home Depot, sometimes we need something at Lowe's, and people have gone down there to purchase that, but it's going to be a little bit stricter. And then the board will be looking at um, reviewing um, the credit card payments as they come through our expense accounts. So I would entertain a motion to accept that one as a first reading. I'd like to make a motion to accept policy DGD school district credit cards for our first reading. Do we hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, that will come back at our next so we don't have a meeting, I think, in early December. Policy. The next policy we have is KGF. It's KGF. It's recognition of distinguished or deceased individuals or groups. This is a new policy. Um, both Kim and I have researched different other school districts about their um, recognition, um, and so we saw the and adopted it for ourselves. Um, and it says, any individual or group may submit a written request to establish a memorial or otherwise honor or to recognize an individual group or in, of individuals. That's one statement. There's more to it. Um, and then, um, secondly, in order the, for the board to consider a request, the people or persons that are making the request um, has to submit a letter of application or information to the board of why the person the person should be recognized. We do list a few different types of awards, could be memorials, could be scholarships, could be um, um, naming of a district sponsored event or activity. Um, we did have one for a track meet a long time ago, and we have one every year for one of our former employees um, to, to note that. Um, so if the board has read all of this, um, I will just mention that at the very end of this policy, um, we did put down what schools or wings of schools were named by whom and when. Um, we also have an elevator down at Lakeway in, in the memory of a former student. Mark Peabody Run is the former educator that we had. Um, there's somebody by the name of Angela Dolone Bench. I was donated in 1998, but I don't know if she got killed in an accident. Yeah, car accident. Huh? Car accident. Yeah. And then there's about three benches in the Daisy Bronson wing that are named after former retirees. So. Still, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like we weren't up to speed on what has been donated or what has been given. So now are you saying that like, if they want to do a bench or if they want to do a designated anything, they're supposed to come to the board for approval first? I would think so, yeah. Is that, that the policy? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know some of the kids have um, donated things in memory, uh, student council people have donated things in memory, but sometimes the board doesn't know all about this, so I think it would be nice. No, I, I have no, I enjoyed seeing the benches and whatnot when I went through the school, but I did not know they were even there. Yeah. So that would be nice to know. So. so do I hear a motion to accept this for a first read? So move. Oh, you want it's to okay. you, No, you do it. <laughs> You're the policy girl. I'd like to make a motion to accept policy KGF, recognition of distinguished or deceased individuals or groups. 
um, for a first reading. So moved. Second. 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 Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Not yet. If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, the next one is um, policy BEDC. It's about quorum of the board. Um, and in today's world, as we all know, um, we can <coughs> attend by electronic measures. So, this a simple majority of the board shall constitute a quorum, so that means three out of five. Um, and then, if you participate electronically, um, which I did a few months ago, that's quite interesting. <laughs> this tells you the procedure of, of that, and then whenever you do that, you have to have a roll call vote from all people present. You, the people in the audience have to be able to hear whatever this person's talking about on the phone or Skype or whatever. So I thought that we should have this policy up to date and current. So do I hear a motion to accept? I'd like to make a motion to accept policy BEDC quorum for first reading and adoption. Okay, do we hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Next one is um, IHAMA. It's education related to alcohol, drugs, and tobacco. And I believe this is a new one. Um, So I think it came out as teaching about, but we thought it should be education related to alcohol and drugs, um, which just says that the statement of purpose, district personnel should provide students, parents, and legal guardians with information and resources relating to existing drug and alcohol counseling and treatment for students. Um, and the superintendent is, is responsible for a lot of things for that to go ahead. So being as this is a new policy, um, I would entertain a motion for a first reading. To um, enter into motion to accept policy IHAMA, education related to alcohol, drugs, and tobacco for a first reading. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, the next one is Policy JLCK is special physical health needs of students. Um, the Littleton School District will make every effort to reasonably meet the special physical health needs of all students consistent with state and federal law. Um, and that the school board recommends that all pupils participate in developmentally appropriate daily physical activity and exercise or for physical education in a way to minimize health risks <coughs> created by chronic inactivity, childhood obesity, and other related health problems. Um, I think we already have this as a policy. So, revised first reading and adoption. Do I hear a motion? A motion to accept policy JLCK, special physical need health needs of students for a first reading and adoption. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now the next one, we do have that uh, policy. It's EHB, it's data records and retention. Um, so the purpose of the policy is the superintendent shall develop procedures for a records retention system that is in compliance with RSA 188.29 and Department of Education regulations. It goes into a lot of special education records, um, litigation hold, um, 
which means on receipt of notice from legal counsel representing the district and that a litigation hold is required um, regarding the routine destruction of governmental records and a few dozen <coughs> other things. It just talks about that. Right to no request um, is in there. So we've had this policy before. Um, we've added in current updates as provided by the School Boards Association. Um, so I would entertain a motion for our first read and adoption for this one. Okay. A motion to accept policy EHB data records and retention for a first read. Second. Second? Second? Yeah. First read, are you going to bring that back? Oh. We're going to adopt this one? We did first read and adoption. Uh, first read and adoption, sorry. This one's first read. Okay. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Now, to go along with that, there's a regulation. Um, EHBR says local records retention schedule. This is the first reading. It goes into all the details of all the local records, um, the right to know requests, how long the retention periods are, it's, and gives a list of records and how long they should be kept, like annual audits are permanent, um, so on and so forth. And then I think at the bottom, about eight pages. <laughs> um, special education records, the Littleton School District shall not destroy student special, ed special education records prior to the student's 25th birthday, except with prior written consent of the parent or where applicable the adult student pursuant to 34 CFR 300.624B. Um, and those records then have to be maintained until his 60th birthday before they can be destroyed. One fun, right, yeah. Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I will accept the first reading motion on this one. A motion to accept EHBR local records retention schedule for a first reading. Second. You second it? Yes, I did. All right. Any further questions? Um, if not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. That's it for tonight. Tonight on those. Stay tuned because we have a few dozen more coming up. <coughs> and those, by the way, are all regulations that are pretty much priority except for uh, one but they are categorized as priority which means that you have to have them another priority is recommended and then a third priority is optional but doing these policies they re will refer you back and forth to two or three other sections anyway with that being said we now have a superintendent's report <laughs> Okay, and I know Jennifer mentioned this uh, a little bit, but again, I want to uh, thank everybody who participated in the Veterans Ceremony, um, <clears throat> National Honor Society for the organization, the choir uh, and band, both of, of which uh, provided the music, and I think, uh, again, it was an excellent ceremony, and again, really appreciate the veterans uh, and their families who were able to attend. It's a nice, uh, the Littleton schools as a does uh, does that that type of event I don't know that that's commonplace um, but uh, it's I'm really really pleased that we're able to do that take take part of that and certainly recognize uh, those individuals <clears throat> the musical also a uh, huge success four sessions uh, recognized Deb Steiner Chrissy Noyes drama mamas and papas who did all the uh, selling of, of the tickets and the concessions and, and cooking meals for the kids uh, during the week of the play and so on. Mr. Doucette, Mr. Hastings, spent a tremendous amount of time there. Uh, Michael Callahan, who is a custodian on, on duty much of the time and uh, who has uh, also re received recognition from the, uh, the students. Um, Again, it was a great, uh, great showcase of talent, many, many kids' talent, whether it's acting, dancing, 
helping with uh, the set, with the actual production. My, my uh, gratitude and kudos go to all of them. We just we have finished our second uh, school town budget meeting last week. You know, I thought those went really well. I thought the principals, the directors did a great job in their presentations the first meeting. I think they really got things started off on a, on a good foot. That uh, had a chance to see a little bit about where the money goes, the things we're doing, the challenges that we have. Um, but I thank the, uh, the budget committee for their attendance um, and for, I think, a good, a good start to the process there and uh, for bringing the questions that they had and hopefully we were able to, to give the kind of information and have the kind of dialogue uh, that we'll need going forward. I just, uh, Al and I attended an economic, it was an economic celebration. I brought a few handouts with me. This was a part of a presentation that was given by Brian, uh, Brian Ward. You know, he has some pretty, pretty interesting information, data in it. There's a few actually that they would like to take a look. I won't go through that with you. This is for you to take and look over, but there's, it tells a lot about the uh, efforts of the, uh, of the, uh, economic development here, a little bit of history, uh, the tax base, the growth in the tax base from 1992. Uh, unfortunately, was, as we all know, the, the tax base has declined a bit from a peak a few years back, but it's still uh, three times what it was when some of these efforts uh, start to take place. So uh, we were pleased to be a part of that and, and uh, listen to the, the different uh, entities and plans and uh, I, th I guess that is it, the hope, the hope and dreams of a community and uh, you know more than dreams when you look at the, the success of the industrial park and some of the other things and things that are going on with the riverfront development and so on. Uh, I did want to comment briefly on grants. We did get a, a little more money, a, a RLIS, a Rural Schools Grant from the state, in New Hampshire a little over $12,000. I'll be work, working with the administrative team on that to uh, earmark that for uh, uh, programs that we currently are, are doing. Um, you got the full grant uh, report, I believe, our last meeting from Paul. We didn't have a chance to talk much about that, but uh, in the near future, I do want to bring back, once the dust all settles on last year's grant, there, are, there is money carried over from last year's grant. I do want to take a little more in-depth time with you uh, looking at that, looking at Title I, how much, you know, where we with Title I, and how, how, how the funding of that is supporting that program. We, we at this point, are able to fund that program with uh, a little left to spare, uh, as well as any, any other updates. We didn't spend all the grant money from a year ago. There is carryover. Uh, but I think it's important that, uh, that you get a sense of that beyond what uh, saw um, just a report the other day. Steve, what type of programs does the RLI as grant? It, it, it is a grant that is based mostly on, on students' economic status. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a, it was a grant that was originally intended to target lower income communities. Um, some of the areas that they recommended that, uh, that that money go toward was uh, uh, drug and alcohol prevention, mental health. Okay. But we have quite a bit of discretion with that, actually. And that was one that uh, really didn't know if, if it was going to be around anymore, and it, it popped up sort of out of the blue here a couple of weeks ago, which was a good, a good, uh, pleasant surprise for a change uh, when it comes to budget and money. Um, you know, and, and I'll talk more about this. And like I said, I do think at a future meeting we do, do need to take a real good look at the grants, the future of the grants the status of the grants with the feds mm -hmm. and so on because there's going to be some changes there. Um, have, have been in contact uh, with our architect or at least one architect firm, uh, Warren Street, regarding uh, our request to have a study done at Lakeway, again to build on the earlier studies that were done. Basically what I asked them to do was to, if we were to occupy the building only for five more years, what are the most immediate things that would need to happen to, to get us to get us there. You know, five years sounds like a long time, but frankly, by the time you do everything needs to be done and successfully pass a bond issue, it would be, at best case, even if we started almost tomorrow, almost five years before we would get there. So I did ask for 
a little bit of a, of a plan for what the most immediate needs are things that just get us by until uh, a new school would be built if in case if in the case if we're able to build that in five years. If that's not the case, what would we need to be looking at in a, in a span of five to ten years? So if it doesn't happen in five years, if it's longer than that, then what are the things that are coming? The things that you know it might be we might be able to put off for five years, but can't put off for more than five years. So we'll get a good sense of that. And then finally, I ask him uh, for the for the kinds of things that long-term things in the event that uh, the community would decide that we need to occupy the current building and fix what is there longer term. What would that look like? And again, looking at those different scenarios of what each will cost and what would be, again, I think that will be good information for the community, for the board, going forward, looking at the choices that we have. When they do that, do mm -hmm. they uh, mention the location of the building? No matter what the building's like, geographically located, it's not good. I mean, it's just... That's another... That's I mean, another, I didn't know what they... No, not, I don't, I don't anticipate or, that. I think they'll, they'll look at... You know, I mean, if we're, if we're going to stay in the building uh, for the foreseeable future or beyond ten years, and that's a whole different, a whole different set of things that you need to do versus if we think no, we might not be there that long. But I think we need to look at it in those various steps so that people get a sense of what it will take. Well, having been around for yeah. a while, uh, that's certainly a, a very important issue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, requesting a new lakeway. Yep. And one of them was the location yep. and the availability of doing anything where we are. Um, right. That's a main route. There's no other routes. And well, no matter what we do or what we get for bear dates, you know, it's just not, not worth it. So yep. I want somebody to at least take a look at that. Yep. So if we have that kind of a feasibility study, for example, mm -hmm. staying there for another five or ten years, that'll make it about 80 years old, you know. Yeah, yeah. How much does it cost to build brand new with all this extra stuff? Yeah. Need to know that as well. Yep. Yeah, I think. Lot. Yeah, I think you can. You can sort of ex you look at the, the 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 last the last work that was done. Apply some inflation and probably get an idea. But let's face it, their things are different now. There there's certain things that you did back then you don't do now. And certain things that need to be done now that weren't done back then. A lot more does money. It, but lot, what does, I'm sorry. I got a lot of new structure, a lot more money being put in for security, for instance. That's right. Than it was even in, even 10 years ago. And I realized 10 years ago was well past Columbine, but you know, even 10 years ago, the, that, that issue alone has changed significantly. But what doesn't change is it's on a postage stamp. Mm -hmm. That's what doesn't change. It doesn't change a major, I mean, a busy street. Right. You know, with with the absence, I can't, I can't get off of this topic. The stoplight. <laughs> Thank you for taking away the one little buffer we had there. Um, so yeah, there's. It doesn't change that. It doesn't change the fact that that um, that there's no room to do anything in terms of expansion, in terms of fields and playgrounds and parking and so on. Well, things are a lot different today than they were in 1950. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway. So, um, there you have it. I will. I will be working on the infrastructure grants as well. I'll keep those fairly small. Unfortunately, you know, I, I think that the, the, the state grants that's out there is a 60-40 split. You know, I'm just I'm fairly disappointed that they didn't, you know, take the time to at least factor in the economic wealth per pupil factors and some of that as well on that 60-40 split. 40% mass in some budgets is much easier than others. So we won't be able to be terribly aggressive there, but some of the things that were perhaps in the budget as well, we can get some help with at least. That's all I have. Okay. Um, I guess we'll have to take Oh, there, there is, yeah, there are some documents I put there for your information. Yeah. I see. <clears throat> okay. I think that, that dealt mainly with the, uh, the work that was done with the tank and the lines and showing it's a mm -hmm. test with you. Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> All right, anything else to come before this meeting?
If not, I'll entertain a motion to go into non-public. I'll make a motion to enter into non-public session under paragraph 2, section 3 of the RSA 91A, column 3 of the right to know law for number 2, the hiring of any person as a public employee, number 3, matters that would adversely affect the reputation of any person other than a member of the board. Taking with us, superintendent. We talk, negotiations also. Oh. No, we don't have to oh. do that tonight. Oh, okay. We have no meeting we can do that then. Okay, all right. So taking with us, superintendent. Yep. yep. And how do you, how do you want to do you want to do this initially with just with Jennifer on the personnel piece? Uh, yeah, because we sure. have the nominations. So taking with us. I think Crystal can go home and the high school principal can hang out. For okay. Her. Just the high school principal. Yeah. I I think yeah. for the initial piece because unless you want unless you want everybody else there, we want to talk about the, uh, we'll the nominations. Oh, okay. That won't take hopefully too long, and we can do the other. Everybody said. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a second roll call, but just need a second. Second. And roll call. Greg Cook. Kim Woodson. Melanie Nelson. And.